So people write, setting up this trail wrist, getting inside the PGA Tour zone, is the way that we control the club face. It is essential to help us get shaft length, okay? Now, hack motion have done it. They've got the trail wrist. You can set it up inside the PGA Two averages here. What I've done is I've set it up between 30 and a 45 degree angle. And if we can get it really close to this 45 degree angle, you're getting the club head in a great position. I'll show you what I mean. And you have to then get shaft lean, otherwise you'll hit a left, okay? So this is what we're gonna look at here. You'll have to excuse the sound, it comes on and off a bit. But when we get back, and you can see from my side now that club head's pointed at 11 o'clock and your side at one o'clock. Now, if I get the toe up, the angle in my wrist is gone. See that? Now I need that angle in that wrist because I've, I've got to get this angle into here to get the shaft length. Once I lose that angle, what happens, once we tow the club up too much, what happens is when we go back and I, I tow the club up too much like this, once I get the shaft length, I'm actually just presenting the heel to the ball. I need to get this club face down so that I can actually get the shaft lean that I'm after and the face won't be open. So people, we're gonna have a look at some amateurs coming up, but are you inside the PJ average at impact here, 12 to 18 degrees of shaft lean with your longer pitch shots? Shaft lean, compression and consistency of strike, because this will bleed into, this moves into your iron play. And this is the best place to practice it. Now getting into impact here, when we're looking at these top players, when we draw a line up, the shaft here, we can have a look here, we've got 73, 90 is illustrating, zero, right? Now have a look at Pat Perez here, three time around the PGA Tour. It's, it's amazing, guys, when we're looking at uh, these great players, how close they are to one another. And the closer you get to these positions, the better you're going to hit it. So people with longer pitch shots, it has more shaft lean in this area than any other area of the game. Luke Donald, one of the world's best ever short game players, have a look at the 75-yard shot. It has 14.6 degrees of shaft lean. It's even more than the 100-yard shot. This is why it's such a great area to practice for everyone as it bleeds into your iron play. Great way to get shaft lean, compression, and consistency of strike. So unfortunately, when we're looking at the amateur players, when we're seeing little shaft lean, it's very risky. So we can see that the club's scraping along the ground, right? And when you hit the ball, there's, there's no spin either because the ball just rolls up the face. And we're seeing around three degrees at times. Most times, this is the area that we're seeing, just the club's already on the ground and the ball just rolls up the face and then just there's just no spin, no compression and just no consistency, unfortunately. So people right, getting your right wrist, that trial wrist set up properly. It's going to help with the plane, it's going to help with your club face control, it's essentially going to make it so much easier to get shaft length. And not only that, it brings the club in behind your hands or level with your hands, so it's bringing the entry in. It's just so good for your iron play. That's where hack motion is, I mean, hundreds of thousands of people, it's just helping so many people. I'll put a discount code to that in the description box. And this entry, right, this is the place to be in your swing. Now, with online lessons, I'm helping people with all their short game, putting and chipping bugs, it's not just full swing, people. And we've got to understand that when we're looking at these great players, you know, when we're looking at this club face control, these, these proven positions, this is really what's helping people hit just pure pitch shots, but also great iron shots. Let's move into some drills, some feels, some exercises. At the end of the video, we're gonna have a look at the spin formula. So guys, right, I really love using this tennis racket. I use it when I'm teaching, I use it in videos. It just, it's a great visual effect and everyone can understand it. So let's have a look at this because you get this wrist position right, your swing plane, the club head, everything's in such a good position, then you'll have to get shaft lean to not hit it left, okay, rather than, flipping it to stop hitting it right, to prevent hitting it right. And when we get to here, see how you can see, it's just, you can see the bullseye, right? Now, if I take the tennis racket away, see where my right hand's pointing? It's just pointing over in this corner here. It's not directly at the camera, but from this position here, you, you can actually see, you're gonna get more compression. You have to actually get shaft lean to not hit it left. Now, when we have a look, when I take it back like this, you guys can't, now you can't see the bullseye, and it's almost like a slice, isn't it? And what we do from there is we have to flip to square it up and then we get like this. So that's the right hand position, that's essential. The delivery, obviously, when you don't have the angle in the right wrist, I mean, there's a lot of, lot of instruction out there. You know, we've got to take it from the inside, got to take it from the inside. And when you see someone like this, but it's, it's actually just the hands. 
So even for a lot of the coaches out there, I'm the younger coaches trying to get people to come from the inside, it's often just the trail wrist and how much angle that you have in it. Such an essential part. So guys, right, have a look at this drill. Got this one off Dr. Robert Neal. What a drill this is. Right, we swing back, stop, flex and shift, stop, and then we move through push up and extend. What does shift and, shift and flex mean? Have a look at this. Swing back, making sure the club's level with your hands and you're getting it at 11 o'clock my side, one yours, right? Go through that position, move back further, okay? Stop, okay? Shift your weight across and flex, meaning you're gonna bow this wrist just ever so slightly. You're gonna get this lead wrist moving into flexion. Swing back, check your position. Back, stop, flex, and shift, stop, and then extend up. And then you can give one a hit. Let's have a look. Great, great drill this to create awareness here. Now, move back, stop, shift, and flex, and then turn through, and you're gonna extend, your chest is moving slightly up, feeling like your left shoulder moves up and back behind you, okay? Your left shoulder up and back behind you. So guys, it's a bit of a mystery from impact to, to the top of the swing here, what, what we're actually trying to do for a lot of people. When I, when I talk about pitching, it's all backswing for a lot of people, but the, to move, keep, to keep turning through the golf ball is essential because it keeps the arm connected to the chest. Now when I turn, my shoulder lifts, right? If I stop turning, if I'm scared, you know when you get over, you've got a shot over a bunker, a pitch shot, it's not lying good, maybe you're a bit apprehensive, happens to us all, and we stop turning, we hit it fat, or we thin it. It's because when we stop turning, the arms leave the chest and work sort of independently, and then the angle of attack's too far down. But if we keep turning the chest and we're active, right foot quite quiet, and move the angle pretty quiet. What it does is it actually helps us lift up the handle. And this is how we can get a lot of shaft lean without digging. All right, so we start to turn, we get a longer flat spot, even though we've got lots of shaft lean, because we've got extension. So let's talk about extension here and getting this chest to work, the shoulder to work up and back. The feeling of up and back. Now, this is a good drill you can do. You get a tour stick, plonk it on this side of your body, right, and scrape it along the ground and then move through and get this club and this left arm up in one line here. This is going to give you some feelings of where your chest is. You take your address position, put this, the tour stick back on the ground, and you can see that I'm up, right? You can see that my, my chest is up. And rather than the club coming in this way and being forwards and or stop turning, then we're in a you know an ugly place. So a good drill for you, get your club. You can actually do it with your golf club as well. It's just the tour stick. It's probably a bit longer, but you can put your grip on the ground, scrape through, and then give it a feel, and then move in. And you start to get a bit of extension, the left pec, the left shoulder, active and working up behind us. So guys, let's talk about this feel here. And uh, we don't have a lot of lag with the shorter shots around the greens. We don't want to dig and use the leading edge. At times we're using different areas of the bounce, the front, the middle, the back. You know, but this shot here, we're going to have a look at how to for you guys to how to get a feel here to create a little bit more angle here. Now, 12 to 18 degrees of shaft lean. We can't get that all at the start because we're just going to pick it up and be too steep. But we can get quite a bit of shaft lean at the start. And we'll see often around 9, 10 degrees here at the start with the grip being slightly forwards. Now, we need more weight left. That's important. You want to stand on this left leg. That's going to help with your shaft lean. Here's a good drill. Get slowly back into your backswing. Get your triceps connected. And then add in a little bit of angle and just come back to the ball and you're just going to have a touch more shaft lean than where you started. And again, a little bit of shift forwards is going to help you do that. So we're going to move back, add in a little bit more angle, and then just come back and get a feeling where that is, move through the ball. And you can just speed it up. All right? It's almost like how we're painting a wall here, getting this right hand, almost like how a fish's tail moves. If you're painting the side of a wall, you're just starting to pick up here a little bit of angle in this wrist, not much. 
right? We don't want to come in this way, but this is a great way and then just get a feel over the golf ball and then give it a hit. I'll just exaggerate it a little bit on this one here. And you just might see that, just keep it soft and just get a feeling of those hands coming in. And you're just, just trying to create, it's just creating your own feelings, your own awareness. So guys, I want to talk to you about this one because the keeping your elbows together is what really helps your plane coming down. And, and for a lot of people out there, when we see people coming down too, too steep with this one, the elbows are splayed. If you could keep your elbows together more, especially at the start here, just you don't want to think too much. But if you can get a little bit of, if you struggle with coming down steep, or if you really want to, it's just amazing to see how close great pitchers are keeping the tops of their arms and elbows together. The, the wider your elbows, really, the, the, the worse we dig and we get into all sorts of positions. So by just creating a bit of pressure, a bit of force here between your elbows, it, it's a great way to keep connection. But it's especially in transition here. If I widen that, you know that hole we see? I don't know if you guys, but you can see that. See where the club is now? And that's, you're probably going to dig from there a little bit. And if you can really keep these elbows in, that elbow really leads in and it's in front of the hands. Once it starts to come down and the hands hit the hip before the elbow, we're too wide. So basic really, but it's been such a big thing. I'm still working on it. If you don't have a great right shoulder, like heaps of external rotation, press your arms a little bit more together at the start here not like this and then hold that through the action if you film it you'll see the club come down on that pure path a really important place to be if you struggle coming down steep if you want to get a great pitching action keep your elbows together through the entire motion so guys right the spin formula low launch low risk high spinning pitch shots technique plus equipment equals spin can't wait to show you this. Firstly, big thank, to, thank you to Dr. Robert Neal and Lane Savoy from Wedgecraft.com. Dr. Neal, my partner on World Class Golf Instruction. These guys have released the most amazing series. It's been really, really popular for golf instructors, golf professionals, and dedicated golfers all around the world. I'll put a link to that, guys, in the description box because you, you don't get that stuff on YouTube, right? So look at this. Technique plus equipment equals spin. You're buying half your spin. Now, when we're looking at high premium golf balls and new sand irons between these two services, a new sand iron, high premium ball, you're getting that grabbing effect, that, that friction, and that's how you're creating your spin, a lot of spin, and you're buying half of your spin. So you won't get it with older golf balls. If your sand iron's a couple of years old and they're worn, it just slips off the face and you're not getting that spin. Very important thing to notice. Your technique, 99% of golfers just don't get the shaft length. Right, so it just rolls up off the face. You've got to be able to trap these shots. PJ2 average between 12 to 18 degrees. There's your zone. The closer you get to it, the better you hit. If you can't get into it, okay, but the closer you get, the better you hit. And guys, just by keeping golf instruction super simple, it doesn't make it super effective. And sometimes actually it makes it ineffective and incomplete. And that's why at worldclassgolf.com we're working with evidence-based instruction. This is an interesting formula here. When you're looking at your spin loft, if you're using your track mans, your flight scopes, or different devices here, your dynamic loft, that's the loft you apply at impact, right? That's the, the loft that you deliver onto the golf ball. You've got your angle of attack, how steep the club's coming down. Your angle of attack, it varies slightly with different machines and different devices, but you're somewhere around seven to 10 degrees on this 50 to 90 minute shot. And getting your dynamic loft minus your angle of attack, if you're having a look in your machine, if you want to get the zone, the spin zone, it's around 55 to 60. Launch angle, how high it goes, around 28 to 30. That's pretty famous with tool professionals and golf instructors. A lot of amateurs don't know that. But you're not going to get that if you're using like a driving range golf balls or, you know, low quality golf balls. Or even if you've got an older sand iron, it just, it just slips off the face. So if you want to measure that, your shaft lean, I keep recommending people to, at, to get live view. Uh, which is just the best training device out there. And you can draw your lines and your angles. I'll put that in the description box as well. S spin or your revs, seven, eight, nine thousand plus revs. As I said, like when you're using dry range golf balls, you'll lose a few thousand. Your sand irons also only going to work with high quality, newish sand irons. This is a really interesting area, guys. So get spin, buying half of it, get your shaft lean. Let's get further on into the series and all get on the path to playing better golf.